here in about oh, uh, 18 minutes or so from right now, a little less than that, actually. We expect to have communication, as a matter of fact, with the Columbia Shuttle Orbiter in about two minutes or so. Communication reestablished after a 21-minute blackout. It's counting down to acquisition of signal at the Buckhorn tracking station at uh, Edwards. That's the first place where we will get uh, telemetry. If uh, Vandenberg is successful in bringing back up uh, their system, we may get uh, C-band radar uh, ahead of that contact, ahead of that time. What they're saying is so they expect to get back in touch in about two and a half minutes now. They've got the chase planes up there. Is that tough for the chase planes to intercept this thing coming down as fast as it is, Joe? It is. It's fast and it's very high because uh, the T-38 is not all that maneuverable at 40,000 feet. If they're in the wrong part of the racetrack pattern, there's no way they can make that interception turn. So you'll, you'll hear Houston give them a time hack as soon as they get tracking to tell them when the orbiter will cross that rendezvous point. There's, a, there's one of the chase planes now. And Mark two minutes to the time you, we should uh, be able to talk to the crew aboard Columbia. When you think of the, uh, the difficulty of being in a fairly small jet like that in a great big sky, Houston, trying to find Houston, something coming at you at something like 4,000 miles an hour, which is about the size of a DC-9, <coughs> it is Houston, very difficult to pick it up. That's right. John McBride will be mortified if he doesn't make the join-up, but it's a, it's a tough job. And those are the same pilots that were at Cape Canaveral when it took off. Yes, indeed. And I believe it took off something like last year, didn't it? It doesn't seem like two days ago. Well, it was it a different like a era. Uh, that, anyway. They come out at 34 miles up there, going more than 8,000 miles an hour, so they're moving right along. The, mm -hmm. uh, and we should be picking them up. We should be not picking them up, but we should be getting the first signals uh, that they got through in about a minute and 15 seconds. Uh, so they're, they're that close. And after that, a lot of things, as I say, happen very quickly. They will pass over the Big Sur coast uh, here in California One minute. six times the, the speed of sound. Uh, and, but after that, I mean, their critical periods are over. Their communications will be restored. Uh, the, uh, the heating will have ended, for the and they will be... Nine. 9,700 feet per second call. They will be uh, turning into a glider. They're dropping now at 9,700 feet, and they're going... U.S. Stand by. Mark. I thought we got an acquisition of signal. Control. I thought we did, too. This is really the most important Chase moment. disregard the Mach 9 call. We'll give it again shortly. Look out, look out. They could be off course, they could have suffered, uh, shall we say, thermal damage, all kinds of damages coming down. You'll know that in about 15 or 20 seconds. Feet. Range to go 410 nautical miles. Stand by for mark on 9,700 feet per second. Hello, Houston, uh, Columbia's here. Hello, Columbia, Houston's here. How do you read? Well, I'm square and we're doing uh, Mach 10.3 at 180 AS. And we couldn't agree more, John. Your state vector's good. We've got uh, good data in-house. Okay, it looks to me like the yellow over is not Now we think we may get a picture of it. A little tiny speck in your screen, and you're going to have to look very closely. Mark, Mach 9 at 9,700 feet per second. This is from the Air Force Long Range perfect Camera. Perfect energy, perfect ground track. And as you can hear, I think, uh, it's Columbia now nine times perfectly moving. Sound. Light and John, we're showing you rolling perfect. right. Looking good. Right, I'm all rolling. Rolling now. We've got to slow it up a little bit as they come in. Chase will be on time. Okay. Those are the Chase aircraft. Altitude 152,000 feet, range 311 miles. Speed Mach 8.8. .8. Well, they're right on the Total money. Total reversal complete. Right Columbia, we show you out of 151K now, 8.4 Mach, looking good. Okay. Roger that, Dan. I got a solid tank and lock on uh, tank and doing three. Roger that trip. We're looking. Approaching the coast of California now. All three APUs hanging in there, looking good. Roger that. We can go. Their hydraulic we have a live systems television picture shape. from the off of the track at Anderson Peak. That looks like it. Yeah. You can see it outlined across the, the coast. Line we'll now. show you crossing the yeah. coast now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 6.6. 641,000 feet. Dolphin. 
Close range, 240 Columbia, miles. Attack ants, go ahead and take them. Okay, going in. We are now just about 10 minutes away from touchdown here at Edmonds. now incorporating tactical air navigation system data into the spacecraft. Mach 7. 135,000 feet, range 221 miles. Columbia. Dead on the ground track. Very quiet to it. Let's go out in here, too. What a way to come to California. Columbia, you're out of 130K now on the tracking. 6.4 miles. Looking good. Roger that. Totally agree with those numbers. And Columbia, your nav state with TAC and is perfect. Roger that. Mach 6, 124,000 feet. Range 177 miles. And John, we're seeing near zero aileron trim. Uh, we sent two tests. Yeah, less than that now. Roger that, out of 119K, 5.5 knots. All flight controllers giving perfect report. Roger, we copy. Slow, slow in. Yes, how did in progress? Roger that, out of 112K, 4.8 miles. 4.8 times the speed of sound. John Young rolling, using manual control now. We see Dell has 21 degrees. Roger that, looking good. Mach 4.4, 107,000 feet. Range 112. Near the Tehachapi Range now. Mountains in California. John at the control, and NASA terminology is Terminal Area Energy Management. Roll reversal complete. Control looks good. Columbia, we see roll reversal complete. Control looks good. Rope's coming out. They should be very near Bakersfield now. And you're starting to get ammonia cooling now. Roger, we can try. And Columbia, you're out of 100K with positive seats. Looking good. Lower than 100,000 feet. Ejection seats can be used oh, now. Beautiful. Below 100,000. Mach 3. Eight ropes out. That's the landing control room on your screen now here at Edwards Air Force Base. Roger that. Looking good. We're looking at him. And you're coming right down the chute. Rudder active now, looking good. Range 73 miles. Columbia, we're go for air data. You're out of 89K, 2.8 miles. Still twice the speed of sound. 89,000 feet. Should hear a sonic boom. Roger that, we're looking. Reversal to the right. Columbia, we see you coming right, looking good. Okay, uh, Crip, they all look good to us. Big S turns, Joe Kerwin. No Not indication of it. Not in this case. Coming we have right a live television yeah. vision picture from the long range optics at Dryden. Columbia, Flight you're coming center. right around the track. The uh, tracking data, nav data, and pre plan trajectory are all one line on our plot boards here. Uh, Roger, we can go. <laughs> Out of 70,000 feet at Mach 1.8, range 42 miles. That is absolutely what the flight plan called for. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. I mean, within inches. 
they're going to be overhead here shortly. Columbia, we show you very slightly high in altitude, coming down nicely, and the FES uh, is to go to off. Mach 1.3 at uh, 58,000 feet. Close. Range 33 miles. They're nearing the west edge of the lake bed on which they will land now. Out of 56K, looking good. The sonic booms will be beginning around this part of California in just a minute.